Today we're reviewing the Phoenix Inverter by Victron Energy and typically I do not like small 12 volt inverters, especially when they're at this price point, but this has to be the coolest small inverter on the market and it has some of the coolest features, so let's go through them real quick. I love my job. So it is small and it is heavy because it's actually a low frequency inverter. That means it has a transformer inside and it can handle large surge capacity for inductive loads. But have you ever seen one that's 1200 watts or smaller? They actually have a whole lineup of small 12 volt inverters. And here's the whole lineup, 250 watt, 375 watt, 500 watt, 800 watt, and a 1200 watt, which we have on the table. And because it's a Victron, it costs more money. And a lot of people would probably not consider one of these because you could buy a cheap Chinese pure sine wave inverter. But now get this, the coolest thing about this inverter is the standby efficiency is ridiculous. It is out of this world. Like other Victron inverters, it has a low idle consumption. Their smaller ones are around one watt. And this one we're gonna actually measure today and figure out what it is. So if you have a large system and you have a large inverter powering a well pump or an electric vehicle charger, but you have lots of small loads to power at night, you could use one of their hyper-efficient Phoenix inverters to run all of those small loads. Because the idle consumption of large inverters can be quite significant. And if you don't need to have have that inverter on 24 seven, you might be better off just running everything through this instead. For example, if you live off grid in a cabin and you have a Starlink and some LED lights and you need those to stay on 24 seven, this is the best way to do it. The idle consumption of a large inverter and how many solar panels you have to buy to make up for that difference, you might actually be better off buying one of these. It will actually be cheaper. With my two inverter system that does 13,000 watt output, it pulls 3,360 watt hours a day. I could run this for the entire winter for the same amount of electricity. Or we're gonna find out each model is different. The smallest one only uses one watt for standby consumption. We're gonna see what this one pulls, but I think it's gonna be very low because even their Multi Plus pulls like six watts for idle consumption. So their LF inverters with their software is fantastic if you want a hyper-efficient system. Also, if your large loads are not run 24 seven, you could save a ton of money with this configuration. Because if you buy a Victron system with their large inverters, it will cost a lot of money. Instead, you could run your large loads through cheap inverters and also use the MPPT and the AC charger and then run your critical loads that you are running 24 seven through this. And yeah, you'll save thousands and thousands of dollars. Also, this has VE direct communication. And if you connect it to a Serbo GX in a Wi-Fi through Starlink, you can remotely operate this from anywhere in the world. And let's say you have a cabin that's far from society, you could easily see what your system is doing from anywhere. And it has Bluetooth connection, which no other inverter at this size actually has. And you can program it to do whatever you want. So lots of cool features. So on the sides and the top, it's very very boring, there's just some mounting holes. Now on this side we have the positive and the negative terminal. We have a on and off switch and then this is for eco mode. This is power and alarm. VE direct for communication, and then a remote switch. If you wanna actually control this remotely with a wire, you can just short out these two terminals and it will turn on or off. And then we have a grounding terminal. And on this side, we have a single AC output receptacle. And this is where you attach your loads. And behind it, you can see a massive inductor and a massive transformer. Look how big that thing is for this little inverter. Because it's a Victron, they're using a toroidal, which has the highest efficiency around. So first we wanna measure the idle consumption. So the inverter is connected to a 12 volt SOK battery. We're gonna use our fluke meter to see how much current. We're pulling 0.75 amps at 13.3 volts. And that gives us 9.975, so pretty much 10 watts. Now let's put on eco mode and see what the idle consumption is. 
2.2 amps in 13.3 volts, 2.6 watts. So understand though that there is a voltage on the other end, but it's not for powering loads. This is like a searching mode. Now let's compare it to the figures in the manual. And this one's supposed to pull one watt. This model in eco mode is one watt. I don't think this can detect that low of a current. I mean, we can zero it again and see. Let's try. Yeah, I'm getting the same results. It is searching though, 0.06 to 0.07 and then it goes up to 0.2. So that might be the average is one watt over a duration. I was just measuring the largest amount of consumption, but it does go up and down, which is pretty interesting. And the default search interval is 2.5 seconds, which is how fast it's oscillating between those two powers. So that makes more sense. Now let's see we're powering a Starlink and some LED lights in normal on mode. We're not using eco mode because we want the loads to run 24 seven. Let's see what the idle consumption is for a 24 hour period. So 10 watt hours times 24. 240 watt hours for a full day. And for a full month, it's 7,200 watt hours. So for the cost of running my big system for two days, I can run this model for 30 days. That is a massive difference. And that's on 24 seven, which is absolutely nuts. I mean, think about how cool this is as a solution if you have a very large system. Let's say you have six inverters on parallel to run a well pump and power tools, but you do not need that at night. You could just run all of your main stuff with this. Now this is my Victron test system. And we're gonna use it with the new inverter to see how well it runs. So first I connected it to the battery bank and this system has a Serbo GX. So we're gonna disconnect this smart solar and we're gonna connect it directly to this inverter. Oh, the cable's not long enough, no! It's like so close. There we go. Okay, it's connected. Now the inverter is connected to the Victron ecosystem and it shows up in here. So let's click on it. And how cool is this? It shows the voltage and how much we're consuming. Now we're gonna connect a small mini split air conditioner to this inverter and run it all day. And this is a 120 volt heat pump by Mr. Cool. Um, I use it to test small inverters and also my solar generators. So let's actually turn it on and see what happens. We're gonna run this all day. So I'm gonna put on the coldest setting possible. And then we're gonna put it into turbo mode. Now it's blowing cold air. So let's check out the consumption on the inverter. And you can hear the transformer hum because it's low frequency. It's pulling 700 watts right now. Now the biggest obvious downside of this model inverter is the AC output is pretty limited, but there's actually a larger output Phoenix inverter but I don't think anyone's gonna buy it because you could buy a Multi Plus, a compact, and those are at a great price considering the features. So this one in particular, especially the 48 volt model is perfect for large systems that need to run things at night or 24 seven. Now the air conditioner is pulling a thousand watts. So let's just continue this test. We'll come back in 12 hours. I'm pretty sure it's gonna power it just fine because it's a Victron, but I like to test things out and connect it to the communication and this is pretty plug and play. You just plug in one cable to the Serbo GX and yeah, you don't need the communication either. You can just run this as a normal inverter just fine. So we'll come back in a bit and see what happens. So the inverter has been running all day without a single hiccup, but I was not able to access the Bluetooth settings or change the low voltage disconnect. I even used the VRM online portal. I used the Serbo GX and I couldn't figure it out. So I asked a Victron specialist and they said that I need the Bluetooth dongle connected to the VE Direct. And I've never done this before. So let's see if it's actually easy for beginners. I'm gonna just plug it in there, connect it with my phone and see if it works on the first try. And these are like 30 or $40. There we go. We're gonna pull out our cell phone. Oh, there it is. That was quick. Ah, oh, we're gonna try zero, zero, zero. Oh, it says six zeros. Let's try it again with six zeros. Nice. Ah. Oh. We have to update the firmware on the dongle, not the Phoenix. So let's do that. Now press continue and let's click on the icon. Oh, look at that. And check it out, it's actually connected. Now these are the settings we need. We have the mode. If you click it, you get on, off or eco. 
output voltage, and then the output frequency, 50 or 60 hertz. The next setting is dynamic cutoff, which I've never seen before. Dynamic cutoff makes the low battery shutdown voltage a function of the load of the battery. Don't use dynamic cutoff in an installation that also has other loads connected to the same battery. Yeah, we're not gonna use that. And this is the setting we're looking for, low battery shutdown. So we can change this voltage. We're gonna set that to 11 volts. And then low battery restart in alarm. So 11.1, .1, that works. It'll just turn right back on. Charge detect, 14 works. Now these are some cool settings. Wake up power, shutdown power, eco mode search interval, and then eco mode search time. So when it's in eco mode, anything over 100 watts will wake it up. And then anything below 50 watts will shut it down. And that's pretty much it. Basic settings for an inverter. And the settings are saved automatically. So let's exit out of the settings menu. And now we can monitor the output of this inverter. And I must admit that was easy. That was the first time attempting that. I had to wait for the firmware to update, but everything went smoothly. Remember the default pin for most Victron Energy products is six zeros and then press enter, it will update automatically, and then you just press continue, so anybody can do this update on their own. Now the low battery shutdown voltage, I'll have a link to a forum post I made that shows 12, 24, and 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery banks, and what voltage you should shut those down at, so please check that out if you need some help. Now we've been running this air conditioner for about 12 hours, and now I'm gonna disconnect it and connect it to the EcoFlow Delta Pros. Also, these LF inverters are very reliable, especially a Victron one. You should be able to run this load for decades. So I have no doubt in my mind with the reliability of this unit, um, it is a Victron. They cost more, but for good reason. Also, we did not connect this to the shunt. So I'm not monitoring how much current is going in and out of the batteries right now. I just, for this test, connected it directly to the battery. If you're building this system, you wanna connect the Phoenix inverter directly to the shunt. And that's it for this video. A very fun, easy video. I'm glad this part was easy because I was dreading it. I was like, oh man, I hope it works. But it was easy. It worked just like everything else. You plug it in, you find it on your phone, you click it and it works. So yeah, very nice. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think about having a massive system and then having the small stuff running off of this. I think people will like this because you need reliability for your small loads, especially lights or like a router or something. So yeah, I think this is great. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.